right, you should see a PowerPoint saying pulmonary ventilation. I think we talked a bit about the spiral. So we're going, we've already identified the features of the alveoli, which are gas exchange and explain the importance of each feature. Um, I've actually posted on Dr. Biology, I've posted a video uh, of that actual lesson or well edited. It hasn't got the bits that are really quite rubbish in it. Uh, so I've just left the best bits. Um, and then we need to describe how data on ventilation is collected, and then we need to calculate pulmonary ventilation rates. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm unsure whether I got you to write these keywords down last lesson. Uh, but anyway, you use something called a spirometer, and it's used to measure lung volume, and it looks a bit like that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'd probably talk through a spirometer as well, but I'm going to talk through it again. Um, but you can use a spirometer to measure the volume, uh, basically your tidal volume, so the volume of air taken in at each breath when at rest, and your breathing rate, so number of breaths per minute. Um, and then also things like vital capacity, so when you really force air into your lungs and force air out of your lungs, you can get a maximum breath in and out. We talked about residual volume. So within your bronchus and bronchioles, you don't have any muscles and they're actually tubes, uh, very thin tubes. And if there wasn't air pressure in them, they would collapse. So some air remains in there. Uh, you can never get rid of all of that air. It's called residual volume. And then we can work out things like pulmonary ventilation rate or PV rate, which is the total volume of air that is moved into the lung in a minute. So, okay, so the spirometer here, you don't, I mean, to be honest, you'd be given the picture, um, but I'll just, just try to explain it. Right. So, okay, so the first thing is, here is a person. Yeah, and they have got a nose clip on because uh, uh, some air could get through your nose. And then they are holding a tube to their mouth. And that tube means that when they can breathe in, breathe out into a sealed system. And this is a unit here that has, it's full of water, okay? And up above it, just up above it, there's an, a space for, for air. And you've got um, this kind of, wedge shape thing and that wedge shape um, thing moves up and down and you can see it's attached what's attached to it is a needle and it's got a pen on the end and it's attached to something called a chymograph now this chymograph it whizzes around and around and around and as you breathe in and out the wedge shaped um, part of the spirometer moves up and down okay so when you breathe um, out, so when you breathe out, it goes up, and when you breathe in, it goes down. Um, and as you can see, when you breathe in, so the arrow here, so here, when you breathe in, it goes through a carbon dioxide absorber. The reason being is when you're breathing out, you are releasing lots of carbon dioxide. The last thing you want to do is when you breathe in a sealed system, is to breathe in your own carbon dioxide because it will reduce the oxygen levels in your body. So it goes through a carbon dioxide absorber. So something like sodium hydrogen carbonate will uh, soak up the carbon dioxide. Anyway, so that's the piece of machinery. And the chymograph will look something like this. Okay, so uh, you've got, let me just put another arrow. In fact, actually, why don't I just copy that one? Copy, paste, there we go. So what you've got here is someone breathing in and out, okay? And you get a trace that's going up and down, up and down, up and down, okay? Uh, and you can see the lung capacity. And here we've got what we call a functional residual capacity, all right? So it kind of stays constant. And that's, that's the amount of air in your lungs that stays constant. Here on the x-axis, you can see time in seconds, all right? And here you can see breathing in. So when you breathe in, it goes up. Breathing out, goes down. Breathe up, 
directly down. And you can work out something called the tidal volume. So the tidal volume is the maximum breath minus the, uh, sorry, the, it's breathing in minus breathing out, basically. Um, so there we go. So you can work out the lung capacity in milliliters there. Right, so here is a question for you, okay? So I'd like you to write down your answer. So what is the breathing rate per minute from this diagram? And what does tidal volume refer to? So I'm just gonna give you a moment to do that. When you're done, can you just, well, are you saying anything in the chat at the moment? No, okay. So I'll just give you a minute or two to do that. Right, okay, so question one asks, what is the breathing rate per minute? Well, what you've got to do is count uh, how many breaths there are in a minute. Well, obviously, here there's only, oh, sorry, here there's only 30 seconds. So you're going to have to double whatever you count. So I'm going to go for the, the bottom peak. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six breaths. So six times two is 12 breaths per minute. So 12 breaths and it's min minus one, and that would be superscript. So that's per minute, per minute. Oh, I can't do it. Home, superscript, there you go. That's correct. Okay. So what does tidal volume refer to? Well, you need to go back to that. That's the volume of air taken in each breath when at rest. Okay. So, um, and that's what that is showing. And so you could work out the tidal volume. So if I was to look at the maximum, so if you can see 2,000, I'm going to go 2,700. And the minimum is 2,200. So that means the tidal volume is 500 milliliters of air. Okay. Right. So if you know breaths per minute and you know the tidal volume, you can then work out pulmonary ventilation. So to work out pulmonary ventilation, you would use this equation. So PV equals tidal volume times the breathing rate. Now notice that they're using different units. Volume can be centimeters cubed, but because we're talking about uh, large amounts, large volumes of air, it's called decameters cubed. So as it says here, total volume of air that is moved into the lungs in a minute, dm cubed is a measure of volume and is equivalent to a liter. Okay, so it's because a large amount of air going through per minute. I'd like you to write down, please, that equation. Okay, and all of the units as well. Make sure the cubed and the minus one are superscript. Okay, I'll give you another minute to do that. Right, so obviously uh, it's not, well, when I say it's not that simple, sometimes in an exam question, they might want you to rearrange the equation. Now, that's not so hard as, as you think it is. So you can use a, an equation triangle or magic triangle. So this is quite a uh, useful triangle. So pulmonary ventilation, to work out uh, pulmonary ventilation, you need to take tidal volume times... Hmm, that's not very clear. Not very clear. So, ooh. Anyway, times breathing rate. Wait a minute, I want to include that. So that would be times. Okay, there you go. Um, and then, however, if I wanted to work out breathing rate, well, I could 
I'll stick my finger over. This is my finger. There you go. Uh, I want to work out breathing rate. So it would be pulmonary ventilation divided by tidal volume. And if I wanted to work out tidal volume, put my finger over tidal volume, and that would give me pulmonary ventilation divided by breathing rate. Okay, that's why it's a magic triangle. So I would like you to try and answer those questions. Okay, so using that to work out that, please. Okay, off you go. Uh, so I'll show you the answers. Okay. So here we go. So there are the answers. So in terms of units, remember de decameters cubed is volume per minute. So per minute is always shown as minute min minus one. Okay, so those are the answers you've got there. Okay, so I'll, I'll just make it bigger so you can see it. So this is a different type of graph, okay? Get rid of that. Um, I'll get rid of that as well. Uh, so this is a different type of graph. So the first, so you, it shows how pulmonary ventilation changes during a period of exercise. It's at one. So uh, some students would start at zero, but if you notice, exercise starts at one. So your answer needs to talk about the fact that pulmonary ventilation increases uh, up to around about four minutes, and at four minutes, it plateaus, okay? Uh, now, I like that word, plateau. It's hard to spell as well. Uh, plateau just means that the, the graph has leveled off, so it's leveled off. So... Um, you would need to say that pulmonary ventilation increases up until about four minutes and then it plateaus. Okay, don't worry too much about the answer because I will share the answers later with you. Right, so the second question is a bit more involved. So this is two marks and I am gonna just reduce the screen slightly. Uh, there you go, so it says, after four minutes of exercise, the breathing rate was 20 breaths Per minute so that'll be at that point there so it's 20 breaths per minute it says explain how you could use the information and the graph to calculate tidal volume okay so what you would do all right is this so the first it says after four minutes breathing rate was 20 breaths per minute so we know the breaths okay the other thing we know at this point here is the pulmonary ventilation so we can kind of work that out. Uh, there we go. Okay, so pulmonary ventilation, I'm going to say, was around about 27, 28. doesn't matter too much. So uh, they usually give a range of data. So I'm going to say pulmonary vent ventilation was 27 dm cubes per minute. And we know the breath breathing rate. So to work out the tidal volume, we go back to the magic triangle. There we go. So I need to work out tidal volume. So it'll be PV divided by breathing rate. So in terms of the question, okay, it would be 27 divided by the breathing rate, which is 20. But anyway, there you go. So that's how you would use that graph. Question 1B, that is what we call an applied question. So you're applying your knowledge of pulmonary ventilation, breathing, and uh, tidal volume to use the graph to work out the answer, okay? And biology, they like those kinds of questions. So you might be given graphs you've never seen before and you've got to work out what's happening. I'll show you one last question. Okay, so you can have a go at that one. So it says, when a person starts to breathe out, the percentage um, of oxygen in the air first exhaled is the same as the percentage of oxygen in the atmospheric air. Can you explain why? I'd like you to answer that now, please. Sorry, I've just put plateau back up there. Anyway, there you go. Okay, so have a think about that.
Right, so if we look at the answer, so air, when you breathe out, the air is coming from the trachea or bronchi, okay, and it's not been in the alveoli. So that is what we what you could say, uh, we were talking about residual air. That's the residual air in your bronchi or your trachea. Um, and therefore, uh, there's been no gas exchange. So the gas exchange occurs in the alveoli, but when you breathe out, as it says here, the percentage of oxygen is the same. It's because it's coming from your bron bronchi or your trachea, not from the alveoli where gas exchange occurs. So I will share that with you. Okay, I'll just reduce it a bit. Ooh, there we go. 